I hear from so many people that are struggling to find a telescope that meets their needs and their budget, and I feel your pain. It's getting harder and harder to find quality telescopes at decent prices. Even for me, someone who needs to acquire and test telescopes for YouTube, it can be a challenge. So in this video, I'm gonna do my best to cover a very specific subset of beginner telescopes, those priced in the $300 range. By the end of this video, you'll have the knowledge you'll need to make an informed decision about which telescope may be right for you, or the person you're buying a telescope for. And at the end of this video, I'll cover a few accessories that would make great holiday gifts for anyone who already has a telescope. This is Learn to Stargaze. So last year, we made a video called A Telescope for Every Budget. For that video, I made a telescope buying flowchart where I attempted to pair different telescopes to different budgets. But then I realized that people wanted a beginner telescope that could be used for both astrophotography for galaxies and nebula, as well as used visually to see details such as Saturn's rings. And since there's no budget telescope that can do both of these things, I made a video called Why You Need Two Telescopes. Now we're effectively going to break that concept down further. In other words, we'll look at beginner telescopes for stargazing and budget options for astrophotography. We're going to be looking at telescopes designed for looking at space. Sometimes companies will take spotting scopes, which are not designed for space, and brand them as astronomical telescopes. They're not. They use photos of the moon in their marketing photos, which is kind of sneaky because the moon will look amazing through their scope. But that's because the moon will look amazing through any scope. The moon will look amazing through a paper towel roll. Spotting scopes look like this. They'll have a 45 degree diagonal and are mounted directly to a camera tripod. Now these are actually designed for bird watching or spying on your neighbors. They're not designed for looking at space, so I'm not gonna talk about them here. For this video, we're gonna break down our telescope selections into five different categories for each type of budding astronomer, starting with kids. For stargazing with kids, and I'm talking about kids here between the ages of seven and 12, they're gonna be most interested in the moon and Saturn, maybe Jupiter, with the help from their parents. Now my three boys have access to pretty much every telescope, so it's been interesting to see which telescopes they actually gravitate towards. The telescope type they found by far the easiest to use is the tabletop Dobsonian. One major reason here is that the telescopes are small and that makes them easy for kids to use and move around. Now, unfortunately, the best option, the Orion Skyscanner, went away when Orion folded last year. And our version, the Zumal Z100, seems to be pretty hard to find. These were 100 millimeter Newtonians with parabolic mirrors. However, Celestron seems to have picked up the tabletop line and their telescope in this range is the Celestron StarSense Explorer 114AZ with a parabolic mirror. Now this is very different from their 114LT version, so don't get them confused. The LT version has lower quality optics and a poor mount. It's the tabletop version you want. The most popular tabletop telescope in this range is the Skywatcher Heritage 130P. Now I have the optical tube from that telescope right here, this is actually the motorized go-to version of the scope called the Virtuoso. That means you can tell the telescope which target you want to go to and it will drive it there on its own, which is pretty helpful. Now the downside to these scopes, at least for me, is the lack of a tripod. With the telescope resting on a table, it can be hard to position your body in a way that makes for comfortable viewing. Now kids don't usually find that to be too much of an issue, they're fine climbing on tables, but adults care more about that specific issue, which brings us to our next option, the grab and go telescopes. These tripod mounted telescopes work best for teens and adults who just want a lightweight telescope to set up and go in no time at all. For this, I always recommend the 102 millimeter refractors. Now these are made by nearly every telescope manufacturer, and it's possible that the lenses are all made in the same factory. Now I've tried nearly every variant of the 102 millimeter refractors on the market, and they all work fairly well. The number in the name of the telescope is typically the aperture size. Unless you're looking at very premium telescopes, I don't like to go smaller in aperture than 102 millimeters. So no, I don't recommend the Celestron 70AZ. It's just too small and too flimsy. Most of these 102 millimeter scopes have a focal length of 660 millimeters, which is pretty short and fast, and thus comes with the risk of chromatic aberration on brighter targets. However, besides some color fringing on Jupiter and a bit of a blue tinge around the full moon, I haven't found this to be much of a problem, and it seems to go away at higher magnifications anyway. The SB48P is found on Amazon. 
just make sure you're looking at the 102 mm version. This scope does not come with a mount or finder or even a diagonal. Purchasing a mount and finder and diagonal separately might push that budget up a bit, but some people already have those accessories, and if that's the case, this 102mm refractor might be an option. Now the Celestron StarSense 102DX is probably the best in this category. It can even be upgraded to 2-inch eyepieces by adding a 2-inch diagonal. The big advantage is the StarSense technology, which uses the camera on your phone to tell you exactly where the telescope is pointed. The app will then show you which way to push the telescope, leading you right to your target. Now recently, the 102DX has crept up in price to over $400. However, Black Friday is coming and I anticipate that this scope should drop back down in price into the $300 range. There's also the Star Travel 102, which we've already reviewed on this channel, which can often be found refurbished for around $300. And if you're on a tight budget, you may be able to find what I'm calling the Costco 102. These are either the Celestron Omni 102 or the Nat Geo 102. The nice thing about them is the slow motion controls, which make it easy to track objects as they move across the sky. Now, Costco doesn't seem to advertise these at all online. They just show up randomly in the stores, so you've got to keep your eye out for them. You may also be able to find the Inspire 102, which is basically the same as the Astromaster. Now, I had a lot of fun with this scope, but the lack of slow motion controls can make it a little bit annoying to center on a target. Option three is for the backyard astronomer. With this option, we're not optimizing for portability. Instead, we're looking to get the most aperture per dollar. We're valuing light gathering above all else. By far the best value right now in this range is the Skywatcher Heritage 150 Tabletop Depsonian, which is currently priced at $309 on both All-Star Telescope and High Point Scientific. The computerized version of this scope, the Virtuoso 150P, is also on sale for about $150 more. So currently, if you apply this coupon, the StarSense 130AZ Tabletop Dobsonian has dropped into the $300 range. This is a great option if you want that push-to capability I talked about earlier, where your phone will connect to the telescope and tell you where to push the telescope in order to see the target you want to look at. The Skywatcher Classic 6-inch Dobsonian Telescope is also on sale in a few places. It's currently over $400, but again, look for those Black Friday sales or refurbished units, and you might be able to catch this in the $300 range as well. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions in the comments about the Celestron 130EQ. For that, please simply watch Ed Ting's video since there's a lot going on with that scope and I think Ed Ting covered it well enough. Number four is for the old school astronomer. This is for someone who is technical and hands-on in nature. Basically, the Ron Swanson of telescope users. This is for someone who doesn't mind a challenge. Now, there's only one telescope I found in this range, and it's the 102 millimeter aperture, 1000 millimeter focal length, Explore First Light 102 on the EQ Nano mount. Now, I have this scope on an AZ mount, and I can tell you the optics are really good but now my AZ mount added about $500 to the cost. Now I've been seeing this telescope and EQ mount paired together for $279 with an additional 10% off. Now I typically don't recommend manual EQ mounts for beginners because they're a lot to unpack if you're new to astronomy. And for me, they simply aren't fun. And those in the Celestron Power Seeker series are simply of such low quality that they're basically non-functional. However, I've seen in the comments of my previous videos that there are some astronomers who don't mind the additional work and challenge and struggle of using a lightweight manual EQ mount. There are also those who really don't like the shorter refractors for the halos on Jupiter and blue fringes on the moon that I talked about earlier. They're really after that higher focal ratio. These traditional long focal length refractors solve that issue as well. So if you're on a budget and don't mind a challenge, the Explore First Light Refractor on the EQ mount might be right for you. I just realized the Explore First Light telescope is on my shirt. Option number five is for the person that wants a smart telescope. If you're looking to take decent images of deep sky objects like galaxies and nebula, a smart telescope is probably your only option. And surprisingly, in the $300 range coming up for the holiday season of 2025, you may have a couple of options. The first is the Seastar S30, which debuted at the beginning of this year at $349, but seemed to have increased in price to $399. But again, watch for those sales coming into the holiday season, and you might see this price drop back down. 
I found the C-Star trivially easy to use, easy to take with me wherever I go, and it's been a lot of fun. The other option, which is brand new to the telescope market, is the Dwarf Lab Mini, which is currently priced at $399. There also seems to be an additional 10% pre-order discount. Now, I've been testing this out for the past couple of weeks. They're expecting these to ship in December, so watch out for that. Let's talk about accessories. Say you already have a telescope and you're looking for a few things to add to your holiday shopping list, or you're shopping for someone who already has a telescope. The first thing you might consider is an eyepiece upgrade. Now, I really enjoy having zoom eyepieces so that I can zoom in on the moon and planets. I have the Celestron version and the SV Boney version, and they both work quite well. For eyepiece upgrades, I've really been enjoying the Bader Hyperion eyepieces. If you or the person you're buying this for is trying to view deep sky objects, I'd go with the 24 millimeter version. If you already own a refractor or a Newtonian and you want better views of the planets, I'd recommend the five millimeter version. And if you have an SCT and want a good look at the planets, then get the 10 millimeter version. If you want to do epic live streams of the moon, like our friend of the channel, Sunshine Nate, check out the Celestron Next YZ. This is the best cell phone adapter on the market that I know of anyway. Also consider upgrading your finder to a bullseye finder. These make things much easier to find. Here we have the Rigel Quick Finder and a generic version as well. I'll put the links in the description. And of course, most beginner stargazers have trouble finding targets and deciding what to look at. That's why I wrote the Things to See with a Telescope series. I've been writing telescope guidebooks for the past 15 years. If you're buying a telescope for a kid, definitely pick up 50 Things to See with a Telescope for Kids. And if your stargazer is a teen or an adult, check out 110 Things to See with a Telescope. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on telescopes in the $300 range. Subscribe to learn to stargaze to take your stargazing experience to the next level. Say hi to Heather in the comments. She's behind the camera. And remember, the future is looking up. <laughs>